Who was the most intelligent Ottoman sultan? It is difficult to say for sure who was the most intelligent Ottoman sultan. This is because each sultan had special strengths and achievements. However, from several literatures, there are several Ottoman sultans who are very prominent because of their intelligence and leadership abilities. Here are three of them. First, Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. The most prominent sultan was Suleiman the Magnificent. He ruled for a very long time, for 46 years, precisely from 1520 to 1566. He was the longest sultan in the history of the Ottoman dynasty. Under his leadership, the Ottoman Empire succeeded in controlling the entire Balkan region, covering the areas now known as Bulgaria, Greece, Albania, Serbia, Bosnia, Montenegro, Macedonia, Hungary, Romania, Moldova, as well as parts of Slovakia, southern Russia, and parts of Ukraine. An achievement unmatched by other sultans. It was also during this period that the Ottoman Empire reached a high level of prosperity. Apart from being known as a great military strategist, Suleiman was also a poet, as well as a patron of the arts and sciences. He succeeded in reorganizing the Ottoman legal system, canon, so he was given the title Al-Kanuni, Suleiman Al-Kanuni. Under Suleiman's rule, the Ottoman Empire entered a golden age of cultural development. The Ottomans had hundreds of groups of sultanate artists, known as EHLI Hiref or, Communities for the Gifted. These communities were managed directly by the palace. Literary historian Elias John Gibbs said, There has never been such a great encouragement in the history of the world to the development of poetry as during the reign of this one sultan, Suleiman. Suleiman himself was a skilled poet. His works were written in Persian and Turkish under the pseudonym Muhibi, the lover. Suleiman is also known for funding several monumental architectures in his empire. The Sultan aspired to make Constantinople, now Istanbul, the center of Islamic civilization through the construction of various objects, including bridges, masjid, palaces, and others. Some of the most famous projects were made by the Ottoman chief architect, Mimar Sinan. Sinan was responsible for building 300 monuments throughout the empire, including two masterpieces, the Suleiman Mosque and the Selimai Mosque. The latter was built during the reign of Sultan Selim II, Suleiman's son. Suleiman also restored the Dome of the Rock and the city walls in Jerusalem, which are now the walls of the old city of Jerusalem, renovated the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, and created a large masjid complex in Damascus. Second, Sultan Mehmet II or Muhammad al-Fadi. Another very intelligent Ottoman sultan was Mehmet II, also known as Muhammad al-Fadi. He ruled twice. First from 1444 to 1446, and then from 1451 to 1481. He managed to achieve a monumental achievement, namely capturing Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine or Eastern Roman Empire in 1453. He was able to expand the territory of the Ottoman Empire significantly. He was a skilled military leader, diplomat, and scholar, and is credited with laying the foundation for the long-term success of the Ottoman Empire. Muhammad al-Fadi or Mehmet II, was able to speak five foreign languages besides Turkish. He was a visionary scholar and craftsman who cared deeply about the fine arts. He was also able to think and implement difficult decisions, such as lowering the value of gold in money. He knew that this would make him unpopular with many people, but difficult problems also require difficult solutions. He needed to finance the inevitable war. In his first reign, Mehmet, as a teenager, defeated the crusader army led by John Hunyadi from Hungary. Hunyadi was a famous military and political leader in Central and Southeastern Europe in the 15th century. This war occurred after Hungary violated the truce in the Treaty of Edirne and Seged. When he came back to the throne in 1451, succeeding his father, Murad II who had died, Mehmet II strengthened the Ottoman navy and made preparations to attack Constantinople. 
And at the age of 21, he successfully conquered Constantinople and ended the Byzantine Empire. Mehmet continued his conquests in Anatolia to reunite the entire region after successfully defeating several small rebellious states. He advanced to southeastern Europe to Bosnia and Albania. In his kingdom, he carried out many political and social reforms. He encouraged the arts and sciences. He died on May 3, 1481 at the age of 49, in the midst of preparations to invade southern Italy, to reclaim Sicily and its surroundings for the Muslims. Previously, the Italian rulers had expelled and massacred tens of thousands of Muslims who had lived there for centuries. Muhammad al-Fadi is buried near the Masjid Fadi complex, Istanbul. Mehmet II is recognized as the first Ottoman sultan to codify the constitution and criminal law, before Suleiman the Magnificent. During his 30 years of rule, Mehmet had expanded his territory to all of Anatolia, Constantinople, Bosnia, Serbia, and Albania. Third, Sultan Abdul Hamid II. Another Ottoman sultan who is considered very intelligent is Abdul Hamid II, who ruled for 33 years, from 1876 to 1909. He inherited the condition of the Sultanate which was bankrupt due to huge debts to Jewish bankers, Armenians and Western countries, by several of his predecessors. Abdul Hamid was a genius. He was able to hold back the rate of destruction of the Ottoman Empire for decades, before he was later overthrown by the young Turks whose elite were dominated by Armenian Christians, Jews, and liberal secular. He managed to thwart several rebellion attempts, and defeated Greece which threatened the integrity of the Ottoman Empire in 1897, even though his economic condition was in ruins. He succeeded in developing an intelligence network to many hostile countries, including the British Royal Palace and the Vatican, to find out the enemy's plans. Abdul Hamid was relatively successful in fixing the country's chaotic economy, which was continuously hampered by the West and its proxies domestically. He succeeded in building an education system, including the advancement of science and technology. He founded many universities and academies, including schools of law, art, commerce, civil engineering, medicine, veterinary medicine, agriculture, and language. There were also many elementary and secondary schools, as well as military academies. He also expanded the railway network in Rumelia, which is the Turkish region on the European continent, and the Anatolian Railway, and built the Baghdad Railway and the Hejaz Railway from Istanbul to Mecca and Medina, to facilitate the Hajj pilgrimage. At the end of his reign, he had succeeded in paying off 95% of the country's debt, inherited from his predecessors. However, because of that, Western countries, especially England and France, really disliked him. They did not want the Ottomans to rise again. Sultan Abdul Hamid II managed to escape several assassination attempts, mainly carried out by Armenian Christians, with the support of Britain and France. But finally, the massive mobilization of foreign proxies within the country, both among Christians and Jews, especially in the military influenced by European liberal secularism, succeeded in overthrowing Abdul Hamid II in 1909. Of course with the full support of Britain, France and Russia.